Did you know you could take things like water, soap, oil, condensed milk, food coloring, and mix it together and it kind of looks like space? Well, you can, and that's exactly what we did. Hey there, Todd here, long time no see. Some time ago, we took a Blackmagic 12K and we put it facing downward at a piece of glass and we shot a whole bunch of light at it and we spent a few days just getting some footage of sort of liquid dynamics, like when you put different colors of different liquids and densities, kind of mix them with each other. And now why would we do that? Well, because when you film it at a super high resolution and you uh, do a little bit of post-processing to it, you can get some stuff that looks like this. And then if you have stuff like that, you can take it and use it in stuff like this. And let me tell you, it was uh, it was pretty fun. So we took all of this footage and we sort of picked all of our favorite ones and we packaged it all up in 6K resolution. I even like ran it through some AI sharpening so everything would be nice and crystal clear. Uh, yeah, we have them up in the Film Bodega store. However, if you didn't want to help us recoup the costs of the Blackmagic 12K rental and you just wanna see how you could use these types of elements yourself without going and paying for the whole thing, we have a couple of ones that didn't really make the cut, but they're still pretty cool uh, for free that you can download right now as well. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to take these video files and take them into Blender or Unreal Engine and start making those sci-fi epic scenes uh, from that short film that you've been telling your friends way too much about, but never starting on. First, I wanna talk about uh, these. These are just some lava rocks that I scanned. I stuck each of them into like a little drill bit and just took a bunch of pictures of them from different angles and like lit them really well and ran them through polycam. And so this is what I got out of that. And uh, yeah, so uh, I'm going to include these as a free download. So if you check the description, uh, you can download that, that free space background asset and these asteroids in the same file and, uh, you know, make, start making your own stuff if you want. But yeah, so check this out. We got seven different little uh, lava rocks that I scanned and you can kind of scale them up and they're pretty pretty decently detailed um, Just for being you know polycam and little tiny lava rocks So you can get a lot of use out of them I wouldn't go super close because you can kind of start to see some wonky uh, details in the texture, but you know at Around this distance it looks pretty good to my eye So first off I'm going to take my camera I'm gonna hit one I'm gonna hit control alt zero that way our camera is just uh, lined up with the Y axis. I kind of like to do most of my scenes starting that way. And then I'm gonna select my camera here. I'm gonna go to my camera options and let's just turn up the clip start to something like, you know, just a really high number. I'm gonna hit shift A, I'm gonna go to empty plane axis and just shift that a little bit on the Y axis with GY. Select all of our asteroids and then select our axis last. So it's the one that's the lighter orange and we're gonna hit control P and we're going to parent object keep transform. And so now what we can do is we can just take these assets and we're gonna hit alt D. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make an instance. It's not going to make a duplicate because a duplicate is going to hog more of your VRAM. It's gonna keep reloading the texture files into your video card if you hit Alt D instead, it creates an instance, which ba basically just makes like a virtualized copy and it saves you tons and tons of resources. So we're just going to start taking these asteroids and shifting them around. And every time you want to make a copy, just hit Alt D and I, you know, just change the rotation a little bit. So it looks like a different element every time. And we're just going to make a little asteroid field using Alt D and changing some of the settings. So once you have an asteroid field laid out, I'd remove whatever existing lighting you have and create a sunlight. And then you make it super powerful. Since usually in space, there's really only something like one bright star lighting a particular area. And it's usually really, really bright. Things like asteroids are super important for space scenes because they provide a sense of scale, especially if you have things like a ship flying through it. You can take this even one step further and add the asteroids to a collection and then use a particle system to emit that collection and use the particles to create a ton of little tiny asteroids in the scene as well. 
You also want to parent that particle system to the main empty also. The benefit of doing this is you can animate the entire asteroid field by moving as a whole using the empty, which makes any other animating you have to do a whole lot easier. For example, all I had to do to animate the ship flying through was animate it flying up and down and dodging the asteroids. All right, so enough of the asteroid fields, you kind of get that. So now let's go into how we actually use these space backgrounds. I'm gonna hit Shift A and we're gonna use images as planes. If you don't see that when you hit Shift A, just make sure images as planes is enabled in your add-ons. So here are all of our different elements but one i really like to use a lot is this uh, 20 gravity so i'm going to bring that in images as planes and what that's going to do is it's going to make a single image plane that has our video file playing on it so i'm going to bring up our shader editor so i'm going to hit vertical split down here and go to our shader editor and let's just kind of see what we got going here Make sure the video file is set to auto refresh and that there are enough frames to cover the length of the shot. First, I'll take the color slot and slide that into the emission color. And now we can control how much emission we get by using the emission strength. As an optional step, you can take the color slot and run it directly into the alpha slot. This will make the darker parts of the image transparent and the brighter parts will have some opacity. And so that gives you an option to layer different versions of these files on top of each other. Or if you wanted to add like a star field behind it, you can do that. For further control of that, you can hit Shift A and add a color ramp node and drop it into the alpha connection here. Then you can bring the slider up and down to affect how much the alpha is being affected. Set it to B spline for a smoother fall off. So we're going to go into edit mode. I'm going to hit tab. I'm going to hit control R to make some new, some new edges and I'm going to scroll up on the scroll wheel and make a lot of vertical cuts here, like maybe that many. And then we'll select that. And then I'll do the same going horizontal like that. And then let's turn on proportional editing uh, with this little button here. And we'll make sure we're set to smooth. And in edit mode, I'm gonna select the very center um, face here. So hit three and we'll do face. And with the G key, let's just scale up our selection here. And really what I'm gonna do is just kind of make like a concave just so it has a little bit of dimensionality. So I'll just push it back in, in Y space and just make kind of a little cove out of this file here. So as you can see now, when we kind of pan around, there's like a little bit more dimensionality. And then we're gonna take that and we're gonna scale it up big time. We're gonna scale it up real, real big. Okay, so it's gonna fill the entire frame and we got to push this sucker way back in Z space. It's it's way too big. And also with it select, I'm gonna right click and hit shade smooth. So we don't see any of that blockiness. And let's just push this sucker way back. And it's just, you know, it's way far in the in the in the outer regions of the view here. And we just keep pushing it back until it's just like clear of all the different asteroids we've created. Scale it up real big again. And so now when we pull our empty in Y space, we're getting a little bit of a little kind of space. All right, so now I will show you how I use this stuff in Unreal Engine. And I was really surprised at how well Unreal can handle these 6K high resolution video files. I have this scene here, it's just a bunch of mega scans assets. And for the water here, I use the uh, Ocean Systems for rendered cinematics. I highly recommend it if you're making cinematic stuff with water inside of Unreal. And I used a whole bunch of William Fauché's Easy Fog. Easy Fog is such a great way to quickly add some extra dimension to your scene. It's just a bunch of different fog planes that you can kind of customize and everything. If you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend checking out Easy Fog. So first I'm gonna go down here into my content browser and I'm gonna make a new folder and let's just call it MP for media player and space texture. All right, and we'll pop in here. And first thing we wanna do is go to media and file media source. And we'll call this MS for media source, space texture. Okay, and then we'll do media player. So right click, go to media, media player. It's gonna give us this little uh, additional assets thing. Go ahead and check that. And that'll make a media texture asset. And so now we have a media texture, a media player. And um, let's just rename this one. 
So now we can go into our file media source and we will click on this little file path guy here, the little periods. And here is where I have all of my space textures saved and we can just pick one. So let's do, let's do sweep Nova. I like that one. So we'll do that. Hit OK. And then I always check pre-cache file. I feel like it makes it play back a little bit faster. And so uh, now I'll hit save. And then we'll go into the media player itself. And here we can actually select our file media source in this little playlist here. So I'll double click that and boom, it's playing back. I will hit loop just, just so I don't run the risk of it like not playing or something. And uh, we will hit save again, as always. And then now you can see right here, we have our media texture and in the media, media player section, our player is selected. So we have our texture right here. And so now what we can do is I'm going to make a plane. So up here in our place actors, let's go to our simple geometry options here. And I'm going to drag a plane out into the scene. Let's kind of move it up and I'm going to rotate it so that we can kind of see what we're dealing with here. And let's just drag our media texture onto this plane. And you might see that not a whole lot has happened quite yet, but that's okay. We can fix that. Let's go into our sequencer here. And if you don't have a sequence, make a level sequence. So in our sequence, I'm gonna right click and add a media track, okay? And then with our media track, we will click this little plus button and media source, and we will select our MS space texture file media source. We can right click that, go to properties, and make sure that our media texture is set to the correct uh, space texture. Media source is set to our file media source and we are good to go. And so now you can see that um, this video file is on this plane, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and just make sure that it's oriented properly. I think it's supposed to be on this angle and let's go ahead and make it kind of more of a 16 by nine aspect ratio because that is the aspect ratio of the footage. And, um, you know, right off the bat, you might say, well, that's kind of dark. That's not quite the right look. That's actually really easy to fix. So what we're gonna do is go into our material here. And right now we have our media texture going straight into base color and the opacity mask. We don't really need that. So I'm just gonna break that link. And so what we can do is we have this emissive color slot right here. And what I wanna do is I want to make a multiply node. I'm gonna right click and type in multiply. And we're gonna add that node right here. And I'm gonna drag that into our emissive color. And then I'm going to hold down the one key and click. And that's just going to make a, a constant variable. Um, and we'll drag that into the B slot. And then we'll drag the RGB from our media texture into the A slot and then we'll hit save. And I wanna show you what happens. Our plane goes completely black. And that's because in this uh, constant parameter that we have here, it's set to zero. So that means it's multiplying this by zero, which as you know, gives you zero. So I'm gonna turn that to one. And then I'm gonna save again. And what you'll see now is this is outputting some actual light. It's emissive. Okay. And that's what, that's exactly what we want because, um, we want it to cast light throughout the scene. Right. And so now I'm just going to push this way back, way back in Z space, just way back. So I'm going to put it all the way back in behind all these clouds so that it looks nice and realistic. So we just keep scaling up till it fills up the whole sky the way that we want it. You can continue pushing it back, etc. And so we'll hit the play key and boom, you see the movement in the video file here. We're getting, we're getting pretty much real-time playback. And here's an example of what that looks like once you've rendered it all out. So if you wanna make some scenes like this yourself, uh, check the links below. We've got the full pack if you wanna pay for it or some free options if you wanna just give it a try and, and see if you can do some cool stuff with yourself. Start making some cool scenes in space. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I'll see all of you next time.